Let me share my screen real quick. Okay. Um, hi guys, how are you all doing? I hope you're all doing great and staying safe. Um, we are here to learn about Python and what we can do with Python and how can we do that. Just before diving into the course, let me introduce about myself. I am Lakshman and just a second. Okay. Um, I am Lakshman and I will be your instructor for this course. And I'll be, uh, I have a master's degree from Texas A&M University in Computer Science. And I work for a healthcare industry, uh, healthcare company in Richmond, Virginia. I'm currently working there right now. I worked for uh, multiple startups before uh, joining in R Richmond. Um, and I am a AWS certified cloud developer. And then I have experience tutoring, like I have tutored uh, high school students and college students before. Currently I'm working on um, big data development. I also worked on uh, different clouds and uh, different databases like BigQuery, Firebase, uh, uh, MySQL, uh, Firestore database, and a lot of other stuff. Um, if you have any queries or comments during the lecture, please drop them in the chat window. I'll try to answer them. Or uh, we can have a, a QA session at the end. So you can always ask uh, uh, at the end uh, what, what, if you have any specific questions or if you have like any questions what we can do in the course or if you have like okay are we achieving this in the course or what we are doing in the course so all those questions please drop them in the comments box or we can have a QA session at the last and that's it about me and um, let's see what is programming and why do we need programming? We are all here to learn programming, right? Why, what is programming and why do we need programming? So what, what, what do you, we use programming for? <clears throat> what do we use programming for? So a computer program is to tell or give a computer a set of instructions on what to do. Without instructions, a computer is just a piece of hardware, like a dumb hardware, it doesn't know what to do. It's like a set of instructions you give a computer or you tell a computer do, do, and then it will just execute it. I'll give a quick example of that. So this is your, uh, like when you open your browser and then open a window, this is your window, and then just type Google. So when you type this, when, when Google is displaying you this page, there is a set of instructions, there are a few set of instructions that are running behind this page. Google is telling this uh, computer or Google is telling your computer to run those set of instructions. So that is the reason this specific page is being displayed to you. What are those set of instructions? Let us see. So yeah, these are the set of instructions that are being run in the background um, for your uh, uh, thing to get displayed for your uh, for this page to get displayed so 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 what is program programming is just a set of instructions we are giving come our hardware a set of instructions to run and then those set of instructions uh, tells our hardware or tells our computer to do uh, what to do or what not to do and things like that um, in some languages, we call them set of instructions. In some languages, we call them commands. Or it's like you're telling your computer to do this or to not do, do this. That is just programming. And we can create web pages, games, a lot of other stuff using programming. And just like, uh, so everybody should have heard of Steve Jobs. Like he's one of my favorite person. Um, he told this quote in one of his uh, presentations. Everybody in this country should learn programming. It teaches you how to think. So this actually inspired me a lot. So I'm assuming this will inspire you on programming too. Um, so what he meant was 
everybody should learn programming because uh, you guys, uh, uh, you can think in a different way or you guys can teach uh, computers how to think and stuff like that. So let's see, the, what is programming? The interaction with machines and computers. So yeah, we are interacting with machines and computers to uh, uh, tell them what to do or what not to do and how to do some specific tasks and stuff like that. Automation of tasks. So we are asking our daily, pro, uh, daily, daily lives uh, we got rhombus now, so rhombus are automating your cleaning tasks, and uh, um, we have uh, some codes running or some data run. If we if we have some data or running, and then uh, we can automate them. So we can do a lot of automations using uh, programming and creating intelligent machines. So there are machines being created right now, which can see you doing or which can see you cleaning your house now, and then it can do it tomorrow when you're not at home. It can do it all by itself. So there are uh, that intelligent machines being created. And programming is crucial when it comes to learning to innovate, create eco-friendly solutions for global problems. Global problems, uh, what, what do we have? Um, so, so for example, the current global problem is uh, COVID-19. So how, are, how, how, how is programming helping in that? It helps you to read all the data and analyze all the analysis. If you have to do that analysis manually, so for example, let's say coronavirus, um, so how many people it's been affected and how are they affecting, I mean, how are they finding the vaccination to it? So what they do is they, uh, uh, they test each person and then give the values to the computer and then computer do all the math behind it. So it does all the math and then gives you the solution. So it's, if, it, if it's a person who has to do the math so it gets complicated and then one person cannot do a math, all the math which is related because it's in a large number of people got affected. So it's tough for a, one, for a single person to do all the math uh, in, associated in that uh, things. So they provide the data to computer and computer does the programming. So that is one example we can use. And then programming is important to automate, collect, manage, calculate, analyze the process, processing of data and information accurately. So we had discussed all these things. So it helps you to collect data. It helps you to manage data. It helps you to calculate. You can, you, you can do your calculations and stuff. You can analyze the processing of data and, and information, like as we discussed, how do we analyze and stuff. Even the linear, uh, linear regressions and all the stuff, all the math stuff you do, you can uh, do them using a uh, computer programming so python we are all here to learn python and then why should we learn python um and uh, this is a quick note uh, this is a basic class and then uh, we are assuming uh, you do not have any background in programming or python uh, you do not know anything about programming uh, this class do not require any prerequisites so you are good to start whatever you do or regardless whatever you do or wherever you are, you stand in programming or wherever you understand programming. So I'll teach you all the basics in this class. And then we also have uh, different uh, programs like based on your classes. Like, uh, so there are some programs which require uh, this basic class as the prerequisite and stuff like that. So um, if you already know programming or if you already uh, if you want to know advanced concepts of programming and design some pro I mean design some uh, models or design some games or websites during using programming there are other courses designed so feel uh, free to contact Satish on them but let's see let's dig why why do we need Python or why are we learning Python now so we all understood why we are learning programming correct so now let's begin why are we learning Python why, why specific? Because there are a lot of a lot other languages like Java, C, C++, C Sharp, uh, R. So there are a lot other languages. So why we choose why we chose Python, and then what are languages? Let's see what are languages. So languages nothing but it's this language we are communicating with the computer. So I'm talking to you in English, and um, I talk to somebody in some other language. So uh this is a way of communicating with each other so we we are communicating using english so the same way we need some language for us to communicate uh with 
computer. So what is that language and how are we communicating it? So that is where languages comes in and then computer knows a lot of different languages and like it's also we have to know that language to communicate with computers. So that's the reason we are learning this language. And then why specifically Python when there are a lot of lang different languages available. To begin with, uh, you can do anything with it from web app development, making simple games to data science. Python is a universal language. And then it has a very user-friendly syntax. It's language uh, which has very plain old English. It is very uh, approachable by users of all ages and experience levels. And for potential benefits, Python developers can expect to make about 100K uh, a year. Even if money is not the most important thing for you, being a developer gives you a lot of flexibility in your kind of career. I mean, uh, you can work from all over the world. Um, rem uh, all the remote, I mean, currently we see due to this pandemic, everybody is remo working remotely. You have, maybe you should have seen your parents or your cousins working from home. Like if they're not the frontline workers, yeah, definitely they're working from home. And uh, it gives a lot of flexibility for you. You, you can use Python uh, in all the aspects of your life. Even if you don't want to become a software uh, developer, uh, Python can help you in a lot of different ways. If you want to become an entrepreneur, it can help you build your own website. Or if you want to become uh, mo de develop a mobile app and then um, get famous, like uh, make big money, it can help you develop a mobile app. If you have a great idea, you can definitely develop a whole mobile app using this. And then also, it doesn't matter in what job or what field, you can automate things. Let, let me uh, tell you a small story on this. So I have uh, so there's a guy who who is working on uh, Google spreadsheets or Excel sheets. Let's assume um, from Monday to Friday, and then he knows a little bit of programming, and then he works on the same stuff and he does the same stuff all eight hours a day, and then all five days. So what he did what he did is he developed a small program which can do the same uh, stuff he do or he, which can which can uh, do the same uh, things he do uh, on a daily basis and then developed it as a program and uh, gave it to the computer and then every day he comes into the work and then just runs that program and then the program does all the work for him so his work became easy so he had he do, he doesn't have to spend like eight hours a day he comes in the morning and then just runs his program and then it does all the work so he has a lot of other time he can do a lot of other stuff so python is used uh in such a way and uh, it is widely accepted as the best programming language to learn first so if you are uh, if you are uh, new to programming it's definitely the best programming language to learn and then it is very fast, it is easy to use and very easy to deploy. I'll show you uh, why is it very fast and why is it very easy to deploy and stuff. Um, it's currently being used to develop scalable web applications. And then, um, so these are some of the websites that are using Python. So YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, SurveyMonkey, these are all different websites that are using Python. And then provide, uh, Python provides a great starting point for beginners. If you're looking for a good job, um, Python is your way to go or if you're looking for like something to work on so, soon after you start your college uh, Python is definitely your way to go and let's see a few examples so this is my Python shell so let's see how easy it is it to code in Python I'm asking Python to uh, just print my name, uh, print hello world. So see, it just printed hello world. Or... It just printed my name. And then uh, oh, when you're printing the first time, it's it might be like a little tough, but then when you do it like for uh, 10, 15, I mean, if you have to do it for five, six times, uh, it'll be easier when you have to uh, do it in Python. So let's assume we are writing Lakshman for the first time and then you would think yeah Lakshman writing Lakshman is easier than writing print Lakshman so uh, let's see 
uh, if you have to write it five times. See, so now writing, writing this is easier than writing this. So that is what makes your job easier and makes your job fast. And then we can also automate a lot of things using Python. So if you go to Target or if you go to uh, Walmart, there are a lot of, uh, they use the applications and then when you shop and then they just scan and you get, the, you, you get your process automatically. Uh, because Python does all the calculations. Let's see what, what, what calculations Python does. So let's say assume Python, we are giving uh, some value five and then some value six and then we need see uh, just python gives you uh, those things you do not have to uh, do the calculation python does the calculation for you you're just telling computer i need the uh, sum of these two values and then it gives you the uh, value so you do not have to do your uh, math so it it does you, it, it does it for you it does uh, it does automate a lot of different stuff um, so let's let's take this example of a whole uh, Walmart. If you go to Walmart, you got different things. So what Walmart does is it it has already defined these things. Um, let's assume they have pen for one, and then your pencil for a dollar, your pencil for like let's assume two dollars, and then. If you want to buy a skateboard, what else can you buy? If you want to, it's like $30. Uh, if you want to buy a volleyball, if you play games, uh, let's assume it's like $15. So, uh, so these are all the stock that are available in uh, uh, Whole Foods, I mean Walmart. So they, they are defined before you guys can go. So when you go, when you uh, buy, what they just do is they just add those things. So what did you buy? You bought pen and then you bought a skateboard. See, so your total is 31. So you bought your pen and you bought your skateboard. So your total is 31. The same way some other guy, your friend man, and then he got a volleyball and then a skateboard. So let's see what his total will be. Okay, uh, we didn't write the spelling of volleyball correctly. So your friend's total will be 45. So see how easy is it to just ask computer rather than if you have to sit and then go check uh, each value and then, okay, now I have to pick up skateboard as $30 and then now I have to pick up volleyball as $15. And then now you have to sit and do the math. So rather than doing that, computer is doing the whole process for you. So it's uh, that easy for you. You don't have to be a genius to know how to code. You just have to be like determined or like you have, you just have to know how to tell computer. You just have to know what you want to get done from the computer. If you know that you can really be a good programmer. So let's see. And that Python is a very programming languages like other languages. It gives us a way to communicate ideas. So yeah, we are communicating ideas to our computer uh, using Python. So in case of programming language, these ideas are commands. So we are giving computer set of instructions or set of commands to run. So that runs those set of commands and uh, gives us the output of those commands. We convey our commands to computer by writing them in text file using a programming language. These files, files are called programs. So what is a program? Uh, it's a set of commands written in a text file using a programming language. So 
but then if you're writing in python if you have to execute python so python has to understand the language so we have to uh, save those text files as .py extension rather than .txt extension so running a python uh, running a python a program means telling a computer to read the text file translate it to a set of instructions and that it understands and perform those actions so uh, if you are asking a computer to uh, run a program uh, we are giving them a set of instructions in that program and then it uh, computer tries to understand that program and uh, it performs the actions written in that program. So let's see a quick examples of what we can do on that. So uh, let us take a new file and name it as uh, hello world. Txt. So we want to tell programming, I mean, our computer to just print uh, hello world. Or let's say we, okay, let's print hello world. So we gave, this is a set of instruction. This is an instruction we are giving computer and then we want computer to tell hello world. So first oh, what we have to do we have to uh, tell the computer in dot txt uh, dot py format it show we have to rename that and then save it as dot py format and let's see what it can do we give in computer see we asked computer to run this file and then it gave us hello world. So it is that simple for us to run a computer program. And then it is that simple for us to uh, actually do a math. I mean, you can, you, you just saw how we did the math. So you can have, you can do a lot of different stuff like that using uh, Python. So you guys are all, um, you guys are all students or like uh, i'm assuming most of you are high school or are uh, middle school students so why do you guys need programming why do so you guys have a question why do i need programming or why should i learn programming i can learn programming later there are a lot of kids who already know programming and they have been participating uh, in summits tech summits and stuff there's a huge tech summit that happened last year in Arizona and then the high school projects were like amazing. They did a lot of different stuff. They were contributing into health industry. They were contributing into beauty industry. So whichever industry you take, uh, you can uh, have programming. Let's assume, um, so somebody comes and says, I want to be a designer. Why would I need programming? Or why would I, I use programming or things like that? So when you are using a computer filter or a computer, uh, Pic filter for uh, your picture um, you need you need programming because the hair should be aligned in specific way there are some modifications that has to be done so there is a lot of difference when you see yourself in a mirror and then when you see some cameras because they do all these things using programming so they pre-program those cam they pre-program your camera to do, do those things and then they, uh, they give it to you so when you look uh, you using those cameras you it looks brighter or it looks different base so even if you use just your camera and then adjust the brightness there are all set of instructions doing that so if you're like into any industry uh, you might need to understand programming at least how it is done why it is being done um, and then why Python for kids definitely uh, is a question for us so why should we learn programming it is something that do not outgrow so you can keep learning as much as you can there are around uh, if you're like python learning python there are around two two hundred thousand uh, libraries in python which helps you to learn or which makes your life easy and then they cannot outgrow it means um, um, if you're learning a scratch or like if you're learning some other thing drag and drop things uh, after some point you might think okay i would have done this much better if i had this option i would have done this much better if i had this option so if using python you don't have to wait for them to give that option to you you can create your own option you can create anything using python 
and then you can have your own image animations you can imagine anything you can de develop your own games and stuff let's see what we can do uh, in python so these are the set of instructions we gave our uh, machine and then we are asking it to run. See, we are we can draw different lines and then different shapes and then um, different width. Uh, they can be of different width, different colors, and then say that here it's turtle. We can change it to a different thing. So these are all the things we'll be uh, doing in the things uh, doing in the du during our course. And let's uh, see you one more thing. So we're asking uh, our program to draw a tree. So see, it just drew us a tree. And then we can ask our program to draw a forest. So let's see if it can draw a forest or not. See, uh, it's a, it's a, these are all set of instructions we gave um, uh, for our program to draw, and then it's just drawing us things. So you can draw, so the, 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 this module is called turtle module, which helps you draw these animations and stuff. So you can use the turtle module to do a lot of other animations and a lot of other stuff. Uh, we, we will be starting our course with the turtle module. So we, uh, we will learn how to do some shapes and then some sizes, how to draw lines and how to draw, how to ask your, how to tell your computer draw lines, how to tell your computer draw stars, how to tell your computer draw animations. So we'll be doing uh, all, all, all that stuff. So let's see what this can do. So these are all different things your computer can do. See, it's just like three, six, six lines, seven lines of code. And then see how much your computer is doing. So this is a uh, animation your computer can do. And then let's go back. Let's just see uh, what our computer uh, can um, do as a. Oh my god! Is it going back? Okay. Um, so just let's just talk about a little brief history on Python. So this guy right here, Guido Van Rossum, he developed uh, Python programming language in late 1980s. And um, he has published his first version uh, in first version, like even before the stable version, his first version was 0 0.9.0. So he released that in 1991. He was working uh, in Netherlands um, when he was developing for a syndrome, uh, CWI. Uh, research institute so this python actually developed as a uh, derived from to be honest to say that uh, from abc programming language uh, which was being developed in cwi at that time so he was already working on that project and then uh, as a side uh, he developed python and then it's all uh, useful for us right now and the first program in the first table version was released in 1994 by him uh, and we will be working on Python 3. Um, and uh, if you guys already know Python 2, uh, there are a few differences that you can uh, see between Python 2 and Python 3. So just see. If, you, if it's a Python 2 uh, thing, uh, you can just, uh, you do not have to give uh, uh, these brackets if you are uh, using Python 2, but then Python Three, there are you, you must give so there are some syntax differences between Python 2, 2 and Python 3 we'll be discussing uh, them during our course and then uh, what can we do I mean what can we do more on our course you can do your homeworks and stuff using uh, Python so what can we do using Python you can develop web desktop applications and stuff so so if Google is running this 
um, you can develop this web page using Python, definitely. Yeah, and uh, there is also a search engine. So let's assume, let's type, uh, let's type restaurants nearby. So there is a set of instructions. There are set of instructions written in Python specifically in this case. Uh, this search engine runs on Google, like Google search engines run on Python. So uh, Google is using Python programming language to when you click this, when you type this and then get, ask Google, it is running Python programming language to run it in the back end and then it provides you uh, different answers. So these are all different answers you are looking for. Or like if you're asking restaurants nearby, these are all different restaurants you're looking for. So, and then, like this is all done by programming language and then specifically in this case, Google is using, uh, I can tell you Google search engine uses Python for uh, searching these things. And website applications, website development, and then data science and AI. So there is a lot of research and a lot of development in data science and artificial intelligence. There are kids working on uh, artificial intelligence and data science. So uh, if you guys heard of Tanmay Bakshi, um, he's a 15 year old uh, uh, software engineer. He works for IBM. Um, you can just uh, Google him and see, uh, there are his TED talks you can see. He gave TED talks at age of 12 or 13 and then he started programming at the age of five or six and then he has his own app by the age of nine or 10. So he knows uh, a, a, bit, a lot of programming and then you can just see how uh, a 15 year old kid can do uh, this much or how much a 15 year old kid can do. He has his own YouTube channel. So you can just look at it and then just see what he can do. So if he, if a, if a 11 year or 12 year old kid is doing this, what can we do? We can do a lot more than what he's doing or we can do as much as he is doing. So. Uh, there, and then there's a lot of data science and AI research he has been doing. That's why I brought up, uh, brought him up talking about those stuff is automation of things and stuff. And then you can do networking and ethical hacking. You can, you can, you can do a lot of networking. So for example, you want you to define your network somewhere in Virginia, you have, you can define here, you can write the code in Python and then deploy the same network in Virginia. And then later you want to deploy that network in California. So, you can use the same code. You do not have to write the rewrite the whole code. You can use the same code and then deploy the same work net, network in uh, California. You can uh, design your own games. For example, uh, let me show a game I have designed for you guys. So, so this is a game um, I have designed. So this is uh, this. So these blue blocks are like moving blocks and then these, uh, this red block here, I can operate this red block using my uh, controls on keyboard and I can um, move that red block to the to left and to right. And then as your score keeps increasing, uh, the, blo the blue blocks uh, increase their speed. And then I, um, so as long, you can play as long as you can and then like once you get hit, uh, your score will be displayed. So 72 is your score. So you can develop your, uh, this is one game I came up with. So if you have your own idea or if you have your own skill, I mean, like if you can think of something and if you are playing different games, like uh, you, you, you guys play a different games, right? So uh, you can come up like, okay, this game can be modified or developed in this way. Or uh, if, if there is a game like this, uh, I want to, uh, if the game, there is a game like this, I would like that better or there are a lot of people who will like that better. You can develop all those games and stuff using programming. So this is uh, that game I showed you is completely in programming. I didn't use anything else. So, so that is what you can do using programming and then internet applications. So I just told you like how Google is using or like anybody else and then graphics. So I just showed you um, a graphic or like, let's see. Um, more graphics. Well, let's see your shapes, how are shape, different shapes done. So these are a set of instructions we are giving our computer and then it's a circle with re a red border, yellow, and then square with black 
color filled with back color. And these are all I'm drawing randomly, so they're, they're just drawing uh, there. So you can do a lot more different shapes and stuff using these things. Uh, let's see. This. There's like a 10 lines of code or 15 lines of code, hardly correct. So let's see what it will do. It'll draw you a star of stars of stars. So it started here and then it went here. So it's drew a star. It's trying to draw a star and then it, it's inside a star. It's drawing, uh, trying to draw a star and then inside a star. It's trying to draw a star. So it, it takes some time for, for it to draw everything. So rather than drawing it by a free hand, see how easy it is to draw it by a computer. Um, and uh, it, it's like you can just run this and then just let it go or run for a while. And then there are a lot of Python libraries uh, I was talking about were available. So we will be starting our course with this specific module, Turtle, and then we'll be using some of the uh, some of these libraries, uh, not everything. But then mostly as you are like beginners, we'll be concentrating more on uh, programming the basic things and then how to interact with the computer. Why do we need programming? What can we learn or what can we do using programming? These are all different stuff we will be talking about. Uh, on programming and we'll be uh, coding like small graphics or small uh, games um, using programming. So if you have any like specific thing you want to do using programming, you can come up with, or if you have your homework or your math homework that has to be done or something that has to be done using programming, yeah, we can, we, can, we can definitely do them in the class or like we can definitely discuss them in the class. There is a lot of stuff you can do using programming. So yeah the, the 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 stars of stars we were drawing they if you are done it kind of looks like this so let's see how far it is done so yeah it's still drawing so so if it is like f completely done it looks like this like a star and then star and then star and then stars like stars of stars um and let's see it's like you know one of my classes like uh, one, one of the kid asked how can I do my programming? How can I do my homework using a program? So I want to do my homework using a program. That's the reason I want to learn programming because I, want, I don't want to do my homework. I'm lazy, I don't want to do my homework. I want to learn programming so that I want my computer to do my homework. I don't want to do my homework. So he has a graph. So he was asked to draw a couple of graphs. Let's see. So you guys know statistics and then like plotting a graph and how how tough is it? Like you have to like see where one is, where two is, and then you have to draw them and then you have to draw them in a straight line and then you have to point them, mark them and a lot of different stuff. So rather than using all that or doing all that, see how easy is it for you guys to do your homework or if you have to do plot a graph in your homework. So see? These are all different points we gave. Uh, we gave our computer, like x is zero and zero and zero, and then x is one and uh, y is two. So x is one and y is two. It plotted for you, and then um, x is two and y is four. So it plotted for you. So so these are all different plots you can do, and then you can also do not only this graph. You can also do a lot of different graphs like these things. Let's see. See, this is a module we gave, and then so we asked A to B four, B to B three, and then C to B seven, and then these specific things here we uh we can we, we gave them here. See the backslash, the straight line, the star. So we actually told the computer each thing what to do. So computer is just do, uh, doing our things, like it is doing our things. Just think how much time it takes for you to draw this uh, graph, rather than just run, like how much time did I take to uh, draw this graph? Like I just open this and then click run. So if you have to do it uh, by yourself, uh, think how much time you can do it. So you can do uh, your homeworks and all this stuff using uh, programming. And then you can,
So you guys must have used paint or drawing boards or writing boards, right? So this is a, this is a board that uh, we developed ourselves. So just see what, I mean, this is something like you can drag and then you can, you can draw or whatever you want, or you can write Lakshmi or like whatever you want. So you can, you, you can draw like different things and stuff. So th this is like the board we developed ourselves. So we're not using some, somebody, uh, something somebody gave us or somebody developed, we developed ourselves and then we are using it. So we can, we can do a lot of these things and then we'll be doing some cool things like these uh, during our course. And then we'll be uh, trying to learn how we, uh, how, uh, what are the different graphs we'll be learning? What are the different, uh, stuff we'll be doing and what what will be different uh graphs or if you say like graphs i'll I'll be teaching you how to draw the basic graphs and then i'll be teaching you how to draw the basic shapes like squares or those animations which we were looking at uh those stuff and then we'll try to learn developing a small game or tell the computer like if i click this button this uh, uh do this if i click this button do this so we'll be doing all kinds of cool stuff uh, I'm really excited for you guys. I'm really excited to teach you all. Um, they, and once again, I'm trying, telling you, we are, we are assuming, uh, this is a basic course. We are assuming you guys do not have any background or you guys do not know any anything about programming. There is no need of any, there are no prerequisites for this. English is your prerequisite. So if you can understand English, yeah, you're good to take this course. So I'm really excited to teach you guys. So how excited are you? That's up to you. And then if you have any questions, yeah, feel free to ask me. I will answer your questions. Um, yeah, as I told you, you can do your a lot of homeworks. You can get your homework done by computer. You can do your, so uh, when I was telling about uh, Tanmay Bakshi, he didn't want to, he was bad at his timetables and then he wanted to get uh, his timetables done by computer rather than him doing himself. That's the reason he did programming and then uh, he asked his computer to do his times tables. So if you are like lazy and then if you do not want to do your uh, homework, if you want just your computer do, to do your homework, yeah, you can learn programming and you can ask computer to do it. So uh, any questions from anybody? Uh, Hi, is this uh, for high school kids like um... A sophomore or a junior yeah yeah so this course is for high school kids we are assuming from for high school kids you're definitely uh, good to take this course but we are thinking like you do not good place to start a programming like programming this is not specifically designed for a high school kid or a middle school kid uh, we are design we have designed this program for a beginner who want to learn programming you can be a middle school kid, you can be a high school kid, or you can be a college student, uh, but you want to learn programming and you do not know anything about programming, uh, this is a very good place to start with. Uh, my son is already doing the Python, so any advanced topics you will teach late, later? Yeah, we have uh, designed specific courses for advanced topics too. Uh, you can talk to Satish on that. So. Uh, uh, there are different courses going on. Um, so you can talk to Satish and he'll give you more information on the advanced topics and stuff. For this, for this class, we will be talking on basics and then teaching people, uh, teaching kids how to program the basics and like basic animations or basic, pro, uh, basic games or like basic graphs as I displayed you. Uh, so those will be the things we'll be talking about uh, in this course. And then we'll be talking more about syntaxes and stuff. Yeah. Because when you're learning basics, you would need those things, right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bringing up that. So um, everyone, thank you very much for the joining. So uh, regarding the uh, this course, this is going to be a very beginner level course. And we do have uh, advanced level courses where uh, if the kid is already knows uh, basics of Python, they can enroll for our advanced courses. But this is going to be a very beginner level and we are encouraging kids who are in uh, age 10 and above, they can enroll for this course. So uh, if the kid is uh, in a high school or middle school, if they don't have any programming knowledge, they can also enroll for this course. But we are encouraging uh, who are in 10 years and above, uh, they, they are good to start this course. Thank you.
uh, any other questions from anybody else? Hi, um, I have a question about uh, how classes are going to be from now on. Um, uh, Vignesh, uh, sure. Uh, the, this class is going to be, uh, uh, we are planning a weekly three to four days uh, session. It's going to be alternate day session or maybe uh, continuously three days every day one hour session. But we haven't finalized any schedule yet. Um, uh, we are uh, taking a confirmation from all the participants after the demo. And uh, we will send you the final schedule through email. So when this when this course is going to start, and also the uh, days uh, like you no know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or it is going to be alternate days. So we will come up with all the plan, and we will send out an email. Uh, and is it going to be an interactive class where uh, the students are also going to have uh, an environment open, and they're going to be coding, or is it going to be just a lecture? Uh, this is going to be uh, uh, like you know live instructor led session and um, what we do usually is uh, uh, it's going to be just like a demo so students will be here and the trainer will teach and if they have any questions they can interact with the trainer and even like you know after the session we give them assignments as well to perform and um, every day they can submit the assignments to the tutor a tutor will look into it and if they have any questions they can come up with the questions in the next session Usually we spend 10-15 minutes uh, in the session for a question and answer. So let's say we completed today first session. Tomorrow, be before we start our second session, we will spend 10-15 minutes for our first session questions. So if somebody is okay. struggling with anything, they can ask questions in the next class and we will okay. help them. So this is going to be uh, purely interactive and this is going to be very beginner level course. So I just wanted to make sure, uh, we will make sure to uh, uh, like, you know, see every kid is learning and every kid is performing the, the program so okay, thank you very purely a uh, beginner course so we have a next level course this is not going to be uh, uh, like you know only one course our plan is to uh, build uh, like you know uh, stage by stage once they complete this course they can enroll for our next level course where we will keep uh, some advanced concepts okay thank you uh, do you have, do you give any projects after this, uh, or it's it's only a classes and then the assignments? Uh, the LB end of the course we are uh, we are giving them a small projects. It's not going to be a big project. So uh, as these are all very uh, like not small kids, uh, so they'll be doing kind of a small projects end of the course. So Lakshman will give uh, more. Yeah. Let me uh, quickly show you uh, what will we be covering in the in these things. I think I just. Uh, Okay, I want that. I mean, I close it or something. Uh, like do uh, like if we miss the classes, uh, are these recordings available later point of time for us to review? Yes, Varshit. So what we do is uh, we will give them a recorded session uh, sessions after the class. So once the class is completed, within an hour, uh, they can access to the, our recorded session. Uh, but uh, like you no, know, we don't give them an option to uh, download. But uh, we will give them an option to view and play. They can uh, play the session, and we will keep everything in a one place where they can go there and they can get the assignment information. They can get the like you no know, material if they have anything for that session. And also, they can go through the recorded session as well. So yeah, l let me quickly show you what we'll be doing. What we will be doing in this course. So starting, we'll be working on uh, Python installation and then running, like how we can run. If you have seen, I've run one script on IDE, I've run one script on, just wrote a text file and then ran that script. I've run on my command line. So we'll be uh, letting kids know that how we can learn and then how we can tell the computer to run the program in different ways. You can run on Jupyter Notebook or you can run on a Google Collab where you don't even need to install Python on your local machine. So there are different ways to run um, uh, a Python program. And then we'll be talking about, uh, we'll be starting with the turtle module and then drawing uh, basic shapes, uh, basic design, squares, circles, stars, and animations. We'll be doing different stuff. Um, we'll be doing kinds of rainbows and stuff like that too. And from week two, we'll be, uh, in week two, we'll be discussing more of syntaxes, how you can comment, 
uh, lines and then like we'll be uh, telling people like what are the shortcuts you can use while programming so if you need to do intent some block what indentations can you use and all the stuff like that and then we'll be talking about the print statements like the variables and then the calculations exponents all the stuff and then in the week three we'll be talking about like conditions and condition flows and we'll be uh, teaching people what a module is uh, so if you have to design a module how you can design a module or if you have to uh, if you are using some module how you have to use and where you have to use we can teach like all the modules uh, in like one training session so we can we'll talk about like few modules and then if you have to use like different modules uh, I can uh, uh, show you I can guide you like where you can find that module if you're like working def uh, particularly on one thing I can tell you uh, what module is useful for you in that particular uh, project or something like that and then we'll be talking about functions and how to write a function what we do use intendations for why are intendations important how to return function or how yields uh, how you can yield a function and then lists and sets will be uh, uh, topics for week five so how you can use lists and then how you can play with lists and then you can use uh, tuples and uh, uh, loops in uh, week six and then uh, you will have uh, projects so not necessarily these uh, these won't be necessarily the final projects you will be working on it depends on how you uh, guys will be doing in the class so if you guys are really doing great and then if you guys are really uh, worked up on what you're uh, uh, writing and what you're talking uh, what codes you're writing and you guys understand like deep in it will be uh, doing more complex projects than these so but the week seven will be doing the projects so we'll we'll be joining so week seven will be like this you'll be joining the class and then we'll be giving the project and then we'll try to understand your thought process if there is something wrong going there we, we try to guide you okay this is the way you have to think if you are doing this or if this is the way you have to think if you are doing this so that kind of sessions will be in week seven so we are planning on this for a seven week session so it's not uh, necessarily to exactly be uh, in this specific order when we talk about these things uh, like uh, sometimes those uh, these things can take like more than a week uh, if we are going slow or if there are more questions or more uh, comments on what we uh, what we are doing uh, so they might fluctuate but this is like our uh, raw course plan which we'll be doing in this course so there are some advanced courses too uh, um for like if you already know these things and if you are already working on these things there are some advanced concepts which covers more of uh, python and then there are a lot more concepts that we can talk about so yeah that is what we'll be talking on uh any other questions yeah, I just uh, uh, wanted to let everyone know after this uh, demo class, we will send out an email with all the details like when this course is going to start and also the, um, the course curriculum, whatever Lakshman showed just now, uh, the document we will send out to you and uh, we'll, we'll send you more details about this course. Uh, if you are interested and if you are willing to join, just uh, uh, send a confirmation email uh, for that so that we'll keep you in the list. Anything from anybody else? Yeah, if any. I do. Yeah, yeah. Go, ahead. go ahead, Vignesh. Uh, I am. So, do uh do games use a different program? Do they use Python or do they use something like C? No. Uh, we we will be doing it on Python. We don't. We won't be talking anything about C in this course. We'll be doing it on Python okay so i showed the game earlier right that game is completely built on python okay so we'll be talking about python and then uh, what uh, there is a module called pi game which is given by python we'll try to use that module and then develop small games with the concepts we are learning in this course okay Hey, Lakshman, thank you. Thank you very much for your time today. Thanks for your demo. So thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining uh, today. So 
we'll send out an email with all the details. Um, uh, thank you all. Thanks for joining again. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.